you know, they never had biscotti when I was growing up, but they never had color TV either. Yes, it was that long ago, but I love biscotti now. And my favorite is double chocolate almond biscotti. Oh my God, so good and so worth the work. I know it takes a little work, I'm not gonna lie, but it's really, really worth it. So I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. First step, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Second step, line a large baking sheet with parchment paper, done. All right, now we're gonna start with the dry ingredients. And I usually sift onto wax paper because it saves washing a bowl. So put out some wax paper and put out a sifter. And when I use cocoa, I usually use a sifter because it helps it incorporate. So it's one and a half cups of all-purpose flour and half a cup of whole wheat pastry flour. Make these a little bit healthier. A quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder and one teaspoon of baking soda one teaspoon, of, a half a teaspoon, sorry, of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. That's all the dry ingredients. We're gonna sift that onto your wax paper or into a bowl, whatever you like. Okay, and we're gonna set that aside carefully. All right, now we're gonna prepare the chocolate and almonds. And I wanna tell you what kind of chocolate I'm using because it's this brand right here. It's, I think it's pronounced Scharfenberger. It's a high quality chocolate. The better quality chocolate, the better these are going to taste. And the darker the chocolate, the more health benefits. So I'm using about half a bar of this, which is about, this is a three ounce bar. So like an ounce and a half of the dark chocolate. And on the almonds, I highly recommend toasting them first. 350 oven, seven to 10 minutes. It really makes it taste good. You can use raw almonds, won't be as good. You can use chocolate chips, but it won't be as good. So we have to chop these up because they're going to get added into the batter. And the, uh, the chocolate, you just kind of break it in, you chop it up, you know, it's a, like, like it would be like small chocolate chips. Or you can, you know, keep going and make it very, very small. And on the nuts, you can make them coarse, but they need to be chopped up at some, in some way, either coarsely chopped or finely chopped. You just keep going. Now, you can chop this way by hand, or if you have a food processor like I do, you can put it all in the food processor like this, and it makes this job much easier. There. And you can go as fine or as thick as you want. So, okay. All right, so we're gonna process this for I don't know, about maybe 30 seconds. I think pulsing works better because it kind of uh, does, a, does a better job. It's noisy, so excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, that's nice. We got nice chunks of nuts and big, big and small chunks of chocolate, so that looks good. So we're gonna just set this aside, and now we're gonna do the wet ingredients. And the wet ingredients go into a mixer you can mix by hand or with a, a, a stand mixer like this. We're gonna put in three eggs, Okay, three tablespoons of oil. I use canola oil, you can use the oil of your choice. And here, three quarters of a cup of sugar, and one teaspoon of vanilla. And we're gonna mix this for about five minutes until it's nice and thick. So, you just get it going at about a medium high speed. And in about four to five minutes, it's going to start to be nice and thick, and we're going to add the dry ingredients, and we're going to shape the dough. So I'll be back, and I'll set the uh, table up for rolling the dough, and then uh, we'll be shaping some biscotti. Be right back. Well, it's been about four or five minutes, and it's nice and thick now. We're going to add the dry ingredients that we had sifted on the uh, wax. That's why I like wax paper, because you can shape it like this and just put in the dry ingredients like that and mix them in, okay? As soon as that starts to form into a dough, it's gonna be a very sticky dough. We're gonna put in the, the fantastic almonds and chocolate, yeah. All right, there, let me put this up, it might be easier. All right, so these again, you may have chopped by hand or by food processor, and that's what it all looks like. See, there's some, all different shapes and sizes in there. So that's going in, into the batter. Another very short little stirring to incorporate everything. Okay, all right. Now, you can see it's a very sticky dough, but we're gonna be using a very well-floured board to work this into a dough. All right, 
I can smell, I can actually smell the toasted almonds because they've been kind of broken up, you know, by the uh, food processor and you can smell them. So I really, really encourage you to toast the almonds first. In some places you can buy toasted almonds too at the store. Okay. So here we go. Now you have to flour this board really, really well. Okay or whatever surface you're going to work on. You flour it really, really well, and you, this, is gonna, this is messy. Okay, here it comes. All right, it's almost one kind of solid dough, but there it is. Now, you can work with this. Some people like to use floured hands. Sometimes wet hands work on this, too, and a scraper is really, really helpful. So let me make sure... Okay. When I say a scraper, I'll show you what I mean. A scraper like this. And we need a little bit more flour on top here too. We'll try to make it where we can work with this. All right. So you just, the scraper, like I said, makes really, really easy work of this. You just kind of fold it over like that and it starts to become sort of a, a dough. See how quick that is? Just a matter of seconds, and it becomes a nice workable dough. And then we're going to shape this a little bit. Okay, that looks about right. We're going to shape it into a, a nice log there on the, on the uh, baking sheet. So that looks about ready. So I'm going to move this forward and bring my prepared baking sheet here. I'll transfer it onto here like that. Let me get this, all this out of the way. Okay, so here we go. This is the last of it right here. We just kind of shape it into about, uh, usually I think I do about 11 by, let me do it lengthwise, it's just easier for me. About 11 by four. I think that's about right. You know, I can actually smell the, uh, the uh, toasted almonds in here, they, they really, really make a difference. Anytime you bake with nuts, if you toast them first, you'll get a, be a better tasting product. Well, I think that's about done. And I'm looking for about 11 by 4. So let's see how close I came. Press my trusty tape measure. Do you have one of these in your kitchen? All right. Is it 11? It's about 12 by 4. Close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, into your preheated oven at 350 for 30 minutes. And then we're going to slice up some biscotti. 30 minutes. Here we go. That was me. I'll be back. Okay, after about 30 minutes, this is what it's going to look like. You can see it spreads out quite a bit, so that's why we do that narrow kind of four inch log. All right, now we're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes until it's cool enough to handle, and we'll slice up some biscotti. I'll see you in 10 minutes, bye. I'm back, and it's about 10 minutes later, and uh, it's just cool enough to, to work with, so we're going to remove it off the baking sheet onto a cutting board, which I have here. And you can lift the, use the paper to lift it. And then it should come right off the paper like this. Okay. okay, and now we're going to slice some biscotti and we're going to put it back on this baking sheet. But what I'll do is put the rack that I cooled it on, on top here. Now it kind of fits like that, even if it fits like this, that's probably safer if it fits like that, but it's fine. But you want to get some air all around it. So now you can slice it any way you like. You can use a serrated knife, sometimes is easier, uh, or just a really good long sharp knife. And some people cut at an angle. I tend to cut mine kind of straight, but usually you cut off the end like that because it's already kind of uh, firm anyway. And, you know, nobody wants this, so, you yeah. know. Anyway, so you slice it about half an inch thick like that. You can see a serrated knife is doing it. Or you can use a, just a sharp knife like this and cut it into your biscotti. And try not to eat too much of it while you're doing it. Okay, I'll keep cutting. And you'll come back. 
Okay, we're down to the last one. And now what we're going to do is put them back into the oven to, to completely dry. And in most recipes, you put it on the, sh on the baking sheet and you put it in the oven for a while, you take it out, you have to turn them over. With using the rack, you don't have to do any of that. You put them in just once and they'll dry on both sides. So you just put them on the rack. Whether they're touching or not doesn't matter. Now this goes back into the oven for maybe uh, 20 minutes or so until they're completely dry and then they're done. After about 20 minutes in there, it's been getting heat on both sides. You just set it out someplace to cool on another rack or on top of your stove or whatever. And once they're completely cool, they're done. And the thing about these is you can keep them for weeks because they're dry. So, and they also make great gifts. You can dunk them in coffee or tea or milk or hot chocolate, not beer, but you know, most things you can dunk them in. And the, the easy thing about biscotti is it's hard to go wrong when you have to bake something dry. Like if you overbake it, who's going to know?